Hi. I think I've been alone too long because I'm trying to make this video and I'm so rambly. So I guess I'm just going to kind of tell you what I'm doing and I'll let this one be a little rambly and maybe I can make the next one a bit more defined. Indeed. So we'll start off with uh, I'm reading again. It's not really good to be a dancer and read because when you're me, whatever you're reading kind of really occupies a large portion of what you think of. So, uh, I really love this book, though. And I love this author. This is Orson Scott Card, and he just always makes me analyze things that I never really thought about. The last book in this series was Speaker for the Dead, and I, I've read the whole series before, but I was, I was quite a bit younger, so I find that I get more mature meaning out of books now that I'm a little bit older. I put more thought into what the author is trying to say, not just take the surface meaning of the book. Uh, the Speaker of the Dead really made me think about the way we do anthropology in our, in our culture, in the first world countries. Is it really fair to go and watch other people, people us, other us, and watch them be in a bad situation and know ways that you could help them quite easily, but you feel that somehow you would taint their culture and that their culture is more valuable than survival. That's an overration of culture. Culture is great when you're alive. It really doesn't mean dick to people when they're starving to death or they're putting up with bullshit hardships that they really shouldn't have to. So, I, I don't know, like, I really feel dirty now for all the enjoyment I've ever had out of anthropology because I think of, of them, we could have helped all those people. You know, like, like you're fine, you like your culture, you're eating, things are good, you don't want more, then that's, that's fine. But to completely deny people that, that could use it, and it would be very helpful for them, and they want them, just ridiculous. And that was really brought up in uh, the last book, Speaker for the Dead, and it was about the buggers and the, the piggies. This is more about the buggers in this one. Uh, just, when is it right to kill something? Like, to kill all of something? That's a really tough question. There are some people in this country who would want to wipe out whole entire other countries because of the actions of a few people. And I wish that they would read a book with some sort of context like this that would challenge their thinking about genocide, or in this case, xenocide. Let's not kill off whole races. Let's not kill off whole people. Now we're going to slide over to another way of thinking, though, because we're going to move on to uh, the animal populations. I think this is a place where humans are thinking they're better than nature. We can definitely look back and see that when an environment changes, an animal either has to adapt and survive in the environment or they will fail. So most of our preservation efforts without renewing the initial environment are just really to keep animals to put in zoos. I, I don't know, that kind of seems like prison for animals and I don't know, maybe if you could get in the animals' brains and ask them if they would like to just die out as a species or if they would like to think that a few of their kind would live in jail for the rest of their lives and never really know, you know, freedom, life, not really be what they were, but to be some construed zoo animal that gets fed and pampered. I, uh, we, we think of it as humans. We think it's good, but animals get bored when they can't hunt and do and... They don't, they don't want to sit around and think like us people do. They, they want to live life and be active and full. So I would say I'm kind of against like, like what we're doing with the giant pandas. If, if their food habitat is going to be destroyed, then we should really ask why we are preserving them as a zoo species. There have been many species on this planet that have completely died out. And yes, some of them have been strictly due to humans hunting them to extinction. 
we tend not to do that so much anymore. We understand the implications. And honestly, if you think food is tasty and you want to eat it again, you can't kill all of it and expect there to be more tomorrow. We kind of learned our lesson about sustainability with herds, and so we're not killing things off as much, at least in the countries where we have luxury to do that because there's enough food that we don't have to go after things that aggressively. Not that all countries couldn't have enough food to eat, that's just insane that we don't ship food that's available to any country that would need it. Rice, grain, surpluses. There's a lot of food surpluses in America. A lot of farmers are paid not to grow crops. Indeed, some farmers are even paid to grow native wild flowers for X amount of time so that their land might rejuvenate. That's fantastic, isn't it? But uh, yeah, that, that kind of signals that we have a food surplus, we produce more food than we eat, we could share that food. No one needs to starve in this world. It's only a, a worshipping of capitalism that leads to that. Maybe some things aren't about money. Like making sure people that already exist eat. And making sure that the people who exist have rights to, I don't know, like, you know, abortion so that they don't have kids they can't feed if they don't want to. And that's a great step, like saying, hey, you don't want that kid you can't feed? Well, have a free abortion. Have a pet rock while you're at it. Pet rocks for abortions. So I think people are kind of arrogant with our assumption that the environment is always going to be like it is now. Of course it's getting, you know, warmer and colder and hello, we're in between ice ages. The planet has consistently throughout its history changed temperatures, changed weather patterns. What do you want? Are we so arrogant as a species that we think our mere presence is going to stop nature from being nature? No, it's not. And if you think that, if you're in such defiance of nature, perhaps you should be in defiance of gravity and jump off a building. Just a thought. Oh, my belly's growling. I'm hungry. Yeah, normal size book. If you're thinking I'm like ridiculously small, this is the uh, big print reader. Big, big, giant, giant print. I kind of like it though, because I don't have to wear my glasses and I don't have to put it up right next to my face. Awesome. Maybe I'll start buying these big readers and act like I'm an old person all the time. Oh, can I get bigger letters? Can, can the A be this big? <laughs>